Okay, my name is Alethea Contis, and I'm a princess. <laughs> um, I didn't used to be a princess, I used to be a tomboy that climbed trees and thought princesses were stupid. So don't go back in time and tell me then what me now looks like, because me then would probably die. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was a crazy, avid reader when I was a little girl. And when I say that, I mean my dad used to read to me every single night. Um, every single night. So I have a photographic memory. And I memorized all the words and taught myself to read. So by the time I was three, I was reading the TV guide and reading everything else. So I can actually, I started reading before I can actually remember things, which is a little strange. Um, but by the time I was five, I was crazy. There's this picture of me at five, asleep on the bed with like piles of books everywhere, because that's just what I like to do. And when you're a kid and you tell people something you like, like turtles, then all of the people in your family buy you turtle themed thing, right? <laughs> so I liked books. So I was a little kid who got books from everyone. It was the coolest thing ever. This store would have been like my dream sanctuary when I was a kid. So I read everything. I read Diana Wynne Jones. I read Robin McKinley. I read Edward Eager, Lloyd Alexander, Tamara Pierce, Meredith Ann Pierce. So I just went through the juvenile section of the library, alphabetical from Vivian Alcott to Paul. Uh, Linsky. Paul Zinsky, uh, not Paul Zinsky, Roger. Paul Zindel. All of those guys. The <laughs> last name is Bell. Everything. Everything. Um, a to Z. And then I started on Ender's Game and went into the adult section, and that was right when I was about 12. Um, so when I was nine, my grandmother gave me an unexpurgated, really thick, like doorstop, Grimm and Anderson's Fairy Tales. And I loved it. I was nine. Have you read the original <laughs> Okay. So when I was 10 or 11, I was a writer by then, and I was bored, and I said, Mom, I'm bored. Tell me something to write. And she said, go write me a new fairy tale. So I did. That was the coolest project ever. And I wanted to write, this was my goal in high school, was to write one story about a princess starting with the letter A and going through D. I have something with the alphabet. Like, I don't know. I've written three alphabet books now. I don't know what it is. So um, I started writing fairy tales. In the 10th grade, we had this um, peer grading assignment. This is one of the most dreaded things, because when your peers read your stories, they are not as nice as your teachers that give you a little leeway. I was the first peer assignment in history that got an A by my peers and a B plus by my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> because I had taken a 35 page fairy tale that I had written and edited it down to four pages. They loved it. They thought it was great. And when I went to ask my teacher later why I got a B plus, she said, well, it's a fairy tale, but it's really not for children. <laughs> and I wasn't brave enough at that point to kind of contradict her and go, did you realize Cinderella's sisters cut their feet off? Because, <laughs> I, you know, I, I wasn't strong enough to make that argument. So later on, when I was strong enough to make that argument, I wrote a, a, a what do you call it, opinion piece for a paper or an online thing or something, it was free, about the lack of the peculiar purple pine man at Porcupine Peak in the new strawberry shortcake reincarnation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are you familiar with strawberry shortcake? <laughs> okay, once upon a time, strawberry shortcake had bad guys in it. There was sour grapes, who was this lady who had all these raisins, and there was the peculiar purple pine man at Porcupine Peak. Yes, 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 yes. And they took him out. They reincarnated Strawberry Shortcake and they took him out. So I was like, this is ridiculous to have Strawberry Shortcake. And what do they do? Just sit around and have tea? Hello, how are you, Sean? How do you do? Have some tea, right? What do you do? No, your, your town isn't going to get flooded because there's no bad guy. So there's no point. And I didn't understand the point of having the story with no bad guy. And as examples, I used, like, you know, the Cinderella thing or Snow White, where, hello, this beautiful, pure, young thing makes her stepmother dance in red hot iron shoes at her wedding. <laughs> Not really Snow White, as we think of Snow White. And my mom read that and she's like, I had no idea that's what you were reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always kind of had a, a, an affinity with fairy tales. And the fact that fairy tales have kind of exploded in the last couple of years, <laughs> I'm like in dreamland. <laughs> awesome. 
So I tell people when they walk by and they say, what's Enchanted about? First of all, this was called Sunday because Enchanted is the name of a movie and several other books and like a Taylor Swift album and all kinds of other things. So when they say, what's it about? I say, it's Once Upon a Time Meets the Princess Bride. <laughs> See, now you have to buy it. <laughs> Only it's not a Disney Once Upon a Time, it's Once Upon a Time like I would write it because I have issues with Disney and if you want to talk to me about that afterwards, we can go on for a long time. <laughs> so, I'm a Grimm girl. Grimm and Anderson. Anderson needed Prozac, but... <laughs> hey, everybody died. Thank you. And when Disney rewrote the... Who's going to do The Little Mermaid? I was like, can we do that? <laughs> you got to do Doctor Who Didn't Die. What? You got to do Doctor Who Didn't Die. No, that, hey, that was probably one of the only ones. Yeah. But yeah, the Christmas tree, Crockington Soldier, the Little Match Girl, Red Shoes. <laughs> so, and I come from a pretty crazy, extraordinary family. So I thought, how cool would it be if all of the fairy tales we know came from one family, once upon a time? And all of these little stories that have splintered out over the ages just really came from this one family. So the family is the woodcutter family, of course. And they have seven daughters. And the daughters' names are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Enchanted is Sunday's story. She's the seventh daughter of seventh daughter. <laughs> so she gets to go on all those little adventures. And um, she meets a frog in the woods one day. Um, and she kisses him, and it doesn't work. <laughs> but that's OK, they become friends. Um, and small spoiler, one day she kisses him, and it actually does work. And he turns into a prince that her family hates. <laughs> so he's like, wow, this is kind of a bad deal. Um, half of this book is about the prince. I know you can't tell because there's a fruity dress on the cover, because there's this whole trend of YA fiction now having fruity dresses on the cover. Um, they're doing that cover flip thing now, and I've had a couple of people do really awesome frog covers, which I think is really cool. Anyway, so the prince uh, wants to do some little subterfuge and get to know her as, you know, a man instead of a frog. So he hosts three balls and invites every eligible woman in the land. Cinderella. So we've got Frog Prince Cinderella somewhere in the middle for her little brother pants, plants a bunch of magic beans. We've got Jack of the Beanstalk, and it all makes sense, I promise. <laughs> it all, Sean, now she, his quote is on the back. <laughs> it really does make sense. Um, <laughs> I thought we had really severe jet lag, and it was great. <laughs> Um, it has actually, I have been honored, it won the Gillette Burgess Award for Children's Fiction last year. It was nominated for the Andre Norton Award, which I lost last week to Eugene Myers, very gracefully. And <laughs> tomorrow I will be at the Audio Awards, where the audiobook is actually up for an award, and I'm a little nervous. Um, but we'll still be awesome, because it's an honor to be nominated, <laughs> as they say. The sequel, Hero, oh, now I'm upset. The sequel will be out October 1st, well, sequel, companion, book. This, that book was about Saturday, this, I uh, see, now I'm confused. <laughs> this book was about Sunday, this book is about Saturday. Saturday. So, there's a little bit more, uh, squash book thing. The romance was actually kind of hard in this, because I was like, there's dragons and witches and stuff going on, and, oh, they have to bomb off, right? I gotta do that. So, uh, so the tagline that they decided to put on the cover was actually, does romance have to be part of the adventure? <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. So here will be out in October. That's what I'm signing at BEA on Friday morning. But Enchanted in paperback just came out yesterday. And it's lovely. And I hope to talk to you.